Well, welcome and uh, thank you for watching this, our first episode of our Top Trends in Software and Digital Platforms video series. Uh, these videos are a series of discussions with industry experts that aim to shed light on the current trends shaping the future of software and digital platforms. I'm Angela Cooper. I'm the General Manager of Customer Success of Software and Digital Platforms at Microsoft. And today it's my pleasure to speak to the one and only Jay Bear. Uh, Jay is a seventh generation entrepreneur. He's written six best-selling books, founded five multi-million dollar companies, and he's one of the world's top 30 global gurus in customer service and online marketing. In addition to being a Hall of Fame keynote speaker, Jay's helped many of the world's most iconic brands, including 40 of the Fortune 500, exceed their customer expectations. It's been great getting to know you through your writings and, and in preparation Thanks. for this. And um, you've done a lot of work and research and writing post-pandemic on, yeah. uh, been fascinated by it. So what are you really seeing that's changed in, uh, in customer ex expectations post-pandemic? Yeah, you know, a lot, obviously, operationally. Mm -hmm. But to me, uh, what my research has found is that one of the key changes sort of pre and post pandemic is how we all think about time and how we spend it. One of the things that the pandemic taught us is that nothing's really guaranteed. Tomorrow isn't promised. We're not really sure what's going to happen. And we all kind of came face to face with something that's always been true, just not fully realized, which is that each and every one of us has just 1,440 minutes a day. And you can't buy more. You can't make more. In fact, I would say that that time is perhaps the only resource on this planet that we all share exactly equally. And so a lot of the trends that we see in business today, whether it's uh, employees wanting to change their relationship with their employer, uh, work from home, leisure travel, which is when you take your kids on business trips, so you kind of get a two for one, uh, quiet quitting, the great resignation, like all of that stuff is essentially the same trend which is that we care about time and how we spend it more than ever. So what the research shows is that today, two thirds of customers say that speed is as important as price. Now, speed has always been a key part of customer experience, but today I would say that it is perhaps the most important element of customer experience. People say that, oh, Jay, but what about personalization? Personalization is important, and it is. But you'll overlook a business getting your name wrong if they get you what you need on time. Well, Jay, what about empathy and kindness? Yes, we would prefer businesses to be empathetic and kind, but you'll also perhaps excuse a little rudeness if you get what you want when you need it. So speed now, more than ever before, in my estimation, is a competitive business advantage. And so organizations that can align themselves around speed and responsiveness will not only create more customers, but will retain more customers that they've already earned. It makes such sense, right? I think we've all got a little less patient <laughs> during the pandemic. Oh, right. We're so all a little jumpy now. A little jumpy. So I'm curious with uh, with all of the more recent announcements and innovations in generative AI. I mean, yeah. one, of, one of the promises is that sort of pilot, co-pilot approach um you know do you think that's going to have a an impact on the speed uh, side of this equation well i mean certainly in anything that needs to be generated of course a anything that you need to make something to answer the customer question or satiate whatever the customer need is no doubt about it w when you can sort of press the magic button and and you get spit back out a thing that you can then deliver to the customer instantaneously all of that cycle time to think, to write, to package, to edit, to to send, all of that gets shaved away, which is why it's so mystifying to me that there's still a lot of businesses that aren't thinking about speed as a competitive advantage. Because ultimately, we're going to find ourselves in a circumstance pretty quickly where everybody is armed with similar technology, with similar generative AI capabilities. And at that point, fast is just table stakes, right? Like, of course you have to be fast. It's how fast can you be? There's already insurance companies now, Angela, some of our, I'm sure Microsoft clients that will process claims using AI within three seconds. You go to the website and say, here's what happened. Uh, I got in a car accident, uh, da, 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 and, and using AI and what they know about you and your customer history and, and some uh, risk factor assessments, et cetera, they will either say, yep, that makes sense. Here's your money. 
or, you know, that is a weird one. We're going to need you to talk to a human being. And that decision, including the response back, happens in three seconds. So if you're like, you know, old school insurance company, like, yeah, we'll get back to you in two days. And these newfangled guys are doing it in three seconds. Now, what do you do? Wow. Yeah, it, it's it's going to be it, it's really a game changer, I think, in the way things are things are working in the in the industry right now. Do you think it is any different? I mean, most of most of our customers in in the software world, in cloud world, and, yeah. and the digital natives in particular, um, is it different for them? Uh, is speed always appropriate in in those scenarios? Um, yes, it's appropriate, and and I would say that in business to business the impact of being the fastest in your category is more important in many cases than it is in B2C. Because in B2B, people need an answer now. That's why they've asked the question. They need a quote, they need an estimate, they need a part, they need an order, they need a PO, they need, and whatever they need, they need it now, uh, generally yeah. speaking. And the stakes of losing are higher in B2B because the average order size is typically larger, the lifetime customer value, uh, or even the annualized customer value is higher. So the cost to the organization of losing business because they're not fast enough goes up. Yeah. However, it is also true that you can be too fast. Like I don't want I don't want people to take away from our conversation that you should just be as fast as possible at all times. Because there are scenarios in which you can be too fast. And that happens in business sometimes where you're like, yes, let's be as fast as possible, but you're so fast that then it reduces trust. And this is actually an area, coincidentally, where AI is, is really a huge part of the story because AI typically allows you, especially generative AI, to be faster. But if you can spit out you know, 12 paragraphs of text in a second, then does the customer say, wait a minute, they didn't actually think about this. They just queued up their robot. So what I like to tell people is speed at all costs actually costs. So you want the perfect amount of elapsed time in every scenario, which is slightly faster than customers expect, but not so fast where they doubt the veracity and the accuracy of whatever it is that you're giving them. That's really interesting. Yeah, I think there's there's definitely scenarios I can think of where that trust would be eroded if it was too quick. And Fastest yeah. tattoo artist, bad idea. Fastest <laughs> divorce attorney, bad idea. Fastest eye surgeon, bad idea. There's a lot of them out there. That's definitely true. Um, switching topics a little bit, in, in, in our industry, in, in, in the high-tech world, um, growth has really been the king in valuations yeah. and, and, and frankly, sometimes or often at the expense of profitability. How do you think that's changing in the current economic climate, um, and especially from a customer experience perspective? Yeah, I mean, I've been through several cycles. I'm deceptively youthful looking. It's the soft lights um, that uh, belie that. And, and look, in uncertain economic times, we remember something that we know to be true, that we were literally taught in the first day in business. We were all taught on day one, before lunch even, hey, here's the deal. Uh, it's actually less expensive to keep customers than to keep replacing them. Like that is, that's not even 101. That's like, that's like business 99, right? I mean, it's like, it is so foundational and it's been proven over and over and over and over for decades. Like there's no point in arguing it. It's true, but we don't usually act like it's true, right? A lot of times we pursue growth. We pursue net new customers, because we feel like there's going to be a geometric multiplier on that behavior. And in some cases there are, especially uh, in, a, in a hot economic climate. But when things get a little choppy, we start to say, you know, the best way to ride this out is to make sure we don't churn anybody, to make sure we don't lose any of the customers we've already spent time, money, and effort to acquire. And, and that's when you start putting newfound focus on customer experience and customer satisfaction. And what's interesting about speed, as we were talking about earlier, in the new research that I conducted uh, last fall, 85% of customers say that speed is a critical factor in their brand loyalty, 85%. So we think about, well, are we fast enough to get the sale? Well, are you fast enough to keep the customer is also an important way to look at it. Yeah, really, really important stuff. And, uh, and yeah, I think we're all seeing a lot of questions on, in customer success where I, I live. I speak to a lot of my peers in the industry and they're definitely asking questions about you know how do we how do we monetize customer success how do we get a little you know how do we 
go yeah. deeper with our customers, provide a better white glove service and, and all of those things, including responsiveness, right? And then I think those those are those are key topics for everybody. And I mean, you system. would hope that the next, I don't know, year or two are are really amazing for customer success and customer experience professionals, right? That that now executive focus is going to return to, to those kind of success measures and that we put more focus, more investment into retention uh, and, and even you know growth from within. I think it's a great and very exciting time to be in the CXCS side of things, because not only do you have hopefully a new focus on it, but also a lot of new AI and technology to power improvements that maybe we couldn't have executed on three, five, seven years ago. No, you're spot on. I think that's that's so true. Um, Jay, thank you for sharing your perspectives today. Um, such an insightful discussion, always fun. Um, I'm mean, excited to continue the conversation with you. But is there a final message you'd like to share with uh, with this audience today? You know, telling you all that that speed is important is probably not new information. You know that. But I don't know that businesses fully appreciate how important it is. Two thirds of customers say that speed is as important as price. We interpret today speed as caring. It is incredibly, incredibly frequent that customers will hire whomever contacts them first regardless of whether or not they were the low price. We always think that price is more important than it actually is. Responsiveness is more important than we think it actually is. So I'll close with this. If you give your customers time, they will give you money. But if it cost your customers time, it will cost you money. So as fast as you think you are, you can probably be faster. And I'd get started on that right now. Fantastic. Hey, team, if you're interested in hearing more perspectives on our top trends in software and digital platforms, please watch the rest of our series, um, which will feature other industry experts discussing the latest trends and seeing in, in this sector of the tech industry. So uh, thank you, Jay. Uh, awesome to see you and uh, stay tuned. And we hope to see you all again soon.